guys, it's Alan Maramito, but it's only a fresh today. Uh, Michelle's still the animal collection is still raining down on me. Uh, wanted to get a video in ourselves. And, well, I did find out that I can live stream on YouTube. I never did it. I never thought, of, thought about doing it. Um, and, um, so, um, that's why we've never done it yet. But that doesn't mean we can't do it. It just means we haven't done it yet, okay? Um, today is January 2nd, 2016. And Michelle mentioned a video done by Paul Watson of Intowars asking, what is happiness? And, um, given the loss of Debbie Reynolds and Carrie Fisher. And I'm not going to highlight everything Michelle said, but I am going to talk about um, some of the many people who have been, unfortunately, giving people advice for decades. It's almost like a robot testing cold commercial. There's a lot of advice out there about what is happiness. And some of this happiness device advice is, well, questionable. And or it sometimes it doesn't go to the actual root of true happiness. First, people say you can be happy with a thing. Uh, a new pair of shoes, uh, a new car, a new house, whatever. Um, happiness in, in, uh, in, in physical objects for some people does bring joy for a while. Um, but then as to get after they have it for a while and the newness wears off, they tend to feel like, boy, this was a waste of my time. Um, and that may sound kind of strange, but the truth is, that's the way some people think. And and, and um, so other people were kind of seriously questioned about if happiness is so important, why is this so fleeting? And I think the reason is pretty clear. It's because people have been looking for the wrong form of happiness. Um, if you're truly happy, it doesn't matter what everyone else thinks about what you're happy about. You're happy doing it, for example. Let's say, for example, you're happy evangelizing for, uh, for spiritual um, purposes. Uh, we have a friend that is a homeless man who is a mendicant beggar. Um, he's happy um, sharing the gospel with thousands of individuals. And he does a great job and everybody um, who knows him knows that he truly believes that makes him, gives him joy is sharing the spiritual information that he's acquired over his younger life he's like about 30 years old and he does that because he loves to do it even though everybody else thinks it's kind of stupid it's not really stupid it's just that makes him happy just as you got people like michelle for example or happy sharing her love knowledge and and sharing stories on youtube some would say is that's kind of silly but for michelle it gives her happiness um Happiness is not necessarily tied to monetary gain. However, if you can do the things you love and get paid for it, the more the better. Um, Michelle, for example, on her YouTube channel is starting to try to focus on bringing an income in. The income is not because she's greedy, but she does need help with her bills. But she loves to share, and so she will share even if no one you know, forks out money, but, you know, she really would appreciate it if somebody felt happy um, giving for a worthy cause. So, again, do we have the happiness um, that's a little bit different? Now, I have, Dory and Michelle have done many videos together on her channel, but this is my channel, and I realized that I never had Dory on my channel, so I figured if we can get Dory to after Dory done making her coffee, um, getting the Dory to share her experiences, um, 
in her own life. Uh, it would be fantastically different. Um, Dory has been doing Michelle's videos, the Michelle Show, easily since 2013. They have spent a lot of videos together. Of course, I've been on videos with Michelle and, and Dory, um, but um, I don't think Dory has really been on my program, um, which is a little different in the sense of two reasons. One, we don't cover the same topics that Michelle covers. Uh, we tend to cover um, a lot of uh, deeper spirituality issues, which Michelle Shell doesn't go into. Um, but sometimes just talking about spirituality doesn't really help you understand because some I've been listening to some of the other many spiritual teachers out there and they have the notorious habit of um, almost like they, they talk about terminology and, and then they don't explain it to you. So I wanted to invite Dory in to join us but now I have to change the lens, don't I? Normally I would do them in the, in the middle of a video. <laughs> you did a couple times. Yeah, I did, yes. Um, all right. So, the difference between me and Michelle's channel, I don't know if you've ever been on my channel, no, have you? I've never been on your channel, Lumi. Actually, she has been once in the Yellow House. That's right. I was the so that was kind of strange. Um, hopefully, it won't get quite as crazy. The topic is what is happiness? To me, happiness is. Let's see. Let me, um, let's, I probably look like a hot mess. Sorry here. Um, let's see. To me, happiness is. Um, I like to spend time making it with my family. That that makes me happy at times. Um, and sometimes when I go to bingo, that makes me happy. And okay, um, because I know that's a luxury for me. Um, that that because it makes me happy. Um, and it makes me happy to come up here and visit Michelle. Okay. Because I know Michelle looks forward to that. Mm hmm And I really don't know, well, I, I know Lumi, Lumi, I know you, right. but I don't, I mean, I'm not trying to be cruel, but I don't, I don't call Lumi a lot. I don't talk to Lumi a lot because I don't know Sometimes I don't know what to say to Lumi. <laughs> um, I'm just kidding, well, okay. Um, it, it does not many that I kind of tend to say to myself too. So right. Yeah. Okay. So I know Michelle more. So I just want Lumi to know that, I, and I, I, I do, I do like you. I think you're a very nice person. I know you, you help Michelle a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's like, and I know you make Michelle happy. So that makes me happy. Well, let me ask you this question. Um, now, me and Michelle have been here since 2011. And you've known Michelle prior to 2011. I think the first time Michelle ever introduced you to um, me, introduced you to you, you were in the apartment number 10. And I think you're a little bit confused. But of course, now since that time, um, before you knew me and Michelle in 2011, 2010, well, how do you think Michelle's life has changed since prior to me and her joining together? Um, let's see. I, I think, um, Michelle depends on Lumi. Um, Lumi is the power. I think, well, this is how I think, that if, Lumi, if Michelle didn't have Lumi, Michelle wouldn't, know what to do and sometimes because I know Michelle can live on her own and I just think that Michelle that sometimes Michelle needs a little a little companion and that's Lumi. Lumi is her companion. One of the things Did I, I say see, that right? Um yeah I guess so. What I was gonna <laughs> say was one of the things I remember uh prior to her joining us Michelle's spirit guide is 
one of the things that Michelle always said over and over again was, is, I'm alone. I'm lonely. I don't have anybody. Um, and I think that was true. You knew that yep. Michelle didn't have a relationship at all. Um, she didn't have really any friends. Um, I don't think she would have done YouTube videos, personally. No. And I think Lumi is a part of that. Because I think Lumi... Because Michelle always talked about it. When... I think I... In 2010, I think she talked about it a lot. That she wanted to start videos. And I think in 2011... Um, she finally bit the bullet and did it. And I think Lumi had a little part in that. I think what helped a lot with Michelle getting the first videos in was... The fact is that when she got her first iPhone... Um, and the fact is that it had a camera and it could, she could easily upload the camera videos to her computer. And, uh, I remember the first, very first video she ever did, and she was on camera, she looked like a deer stuck in the headlights. <laughs> um, she wasn't sure what to do, but I think as we saw Michelle mature over the five years, um, we've seen her, the quality go up. Yeah. And as far as Michelle personally goes, um, before I joined up with Michelle, uh, Michelle was almost like a piece of driftwood in a sense. That um, besides the fact is that she unfortunately was kind of being persuaded by a variety of people. Um, her real joy was not manifesting itself. Um, she would spend a lot of time listening to music and daydreaming, and she still does. Yeah, I still do. <laughs> um, yeah, but it's she does more now. I remember when I lived here in 2010, she hardly hardly left the house. I I remember that. Yeah, she hardly ever left the house. I think. Um, uh, it could have been also because of the other people in her life, too. But um, because one of the things Michelle said to me was, is, um, I don't feel that um, I'm really happy with what's going on. Um, but there were so many things going on at the time mm -hmm. that we don't want to discuss on this. Not because of anything having to do with HIPAA or anything, but because I think that's kind of... Um, getting off the main topic of happiness um, is obviously you and Michelle have kind of joined up as well and of course you probably were first afraid that I wasn't going to accept that and yet you were probably were surprised when I said I have no problem with it because I mean there's some things that third, uh, and, um, a completely separate entity can help with a personal's life you know when you share um, the same physical body with somebody. It's just like that uh, Travelocity commercial. You'll never room alone. But unfortunately, what happens if you want to be alone? <laughs> <laughs> That's a problem. Because it's like, if Michelle ever wanted to be alone, where am I supposed to go? It's more like we do the equivalent of quietly going to our little separate um, parts of, our, of, the, of the shared mind and close the door and... Well, the other one is doing the equivalent of painting the fingernails. Um, kind of thinking. It's, um, but I think that, as like I said, in those 16 years, I've seen Michelle come a long way. Um, because well, what was Michelle like when you saw her prime town house? I know she was there. I know that she did go at the time. Michelle didn't like prime time house. Because she felt that she didn't fit in. She and still does. <laughs> I, I, but I encouraged to do. I encouraged her to go to prime time. I encouraged her to try it again, and she still don't like it. I think we still explained one time that one of the things is that she always kind of felt more akin to the people at the soup kitchen. Um, and even there, she knows that she's not totally like them because. First of all, uh, there's nobody who's legally blind at the soup kitchen that you can sit down and share stories with. Um, and and that's, that's true. There is, to what I know, when I've talked to people at the soup kitchen along with Michelle, is there really isn't too many people in this uh, media area that are legally blind 
So, but some of the other people have, you know, had similar events, backgrounds to Michelle's. Um, but when it comes to eyesight, for example, uh, Michelle feels like, it's almost like she's got a, uh, how do I describe it? It's like, it's almost like she thinks she's got like a, a, a rare disease of the eye, but it's not so rare. It's not um, so common that the majority of the people in this area really understand legal blindness. Michelle was traumatized as a kid because uh, people were trying to make fun of the fact that she couldn't see very well. Um, even as a youngster, and I think um, that kind of impacted her life in a negative way. But again, when she started coming out and doing these videos, um, I have to remind her sometimes this, look, if you share your story, maybe more people um, would be willing to um, discuss it. And I think she's done a lot. I think she's done pretty good with the 158 subscribers she has. But I still think she wants to go further. I mean, like you mentioned happiness, Michelle always seems to be kind of an enigma because what is she happy about is like, she wants a simple life. Um, she likes to live, would love to have a home that didn't have electricity, didn't have indoor plumbing, you know, had gas or kerosene lighting. Um, but yeah, of course, like so many people, she does like some modern technology. Um, but if you put a solar panel in Michelle's roof, and a big tank of kerosene or propane in the backyard, she probably would be happy as shit, even if she had to go into the outhouse to do it. <laughs> this is really weird, Lodi, to say that way. It's true. <laughs> I knew it would be. Wow. Um, let me ask you this question, Michelle. Now, what do you think um, the future holds for you, or you and Dory, or even you by yourself? Uh... How far in the future are we talking about? Oh, let's just make it easy. Let's just say the next five months, six months. Well, I think I've discussed in my channel. Um, we um, are trying to arrange to um, share the apartment together. And eventually, I'm hoping to kind of get back some of the things that I used to love watching was the satellite dish. And... Um, one of the things I miss with the satellite dish, unlike the Cody, is that I could go ahead and turn it onto a TV channel and watch whatever shows up on TV, like on the, the Discovery Channel or in the History Channel. Um, something, unfortunately, we don't have that pleasure uh, with Cody um, for most cases, because you have to sit there and go through um, and pick your programs and your shows, and it's... It's completely different. It's the same thing with Netflix. Um, so I kind of like being able to just turn the TV on, even if it's on a dull roar, it's still in the background while I'm doing something else on the computer. Okay. But one of the things that I think that um, what I would be so happy to have Dory a part of here in my environment is because, yes, we have physical issues. Um, she has type 2 diabetes. I don't. Um, I have legal blindness. She doesn't. Um, but I think, for the most part, and also I have some hearing loss, and as far as I know, she don't. Uh, what? Well, you don't have hearing loss. What? Do <laughs> anyway, <laughs> still, I, like I said, I mean, I, I think it would be beneficial for both partners. Very interesting. One of the things that people asked me, or Dory asked me was, is if I was upset with the idea that you guys were sharing, um, working together. I don't see a problem with that. Um, I guess we could talk about something that's happiness or um, sometimes the things that can cause unhappiness, um, such as jealousy. Jealousy um, is, is sometimes is when you think... Um, that someone's getting better off than you at something. Um, whereas in the case of this situation, I don't see jealousy because there's no reason to be jealous because I benefit from it too. That's true. You do benefit from it. Um, in the sense that you have, you know, there's always another person to talk to and you don't want to talk to me directly. 
but doesn't mean since I share your ears, I'm always going to be able to hear correctly. No, but still, sometimes a different advice, different opinion. Um, so, well, I think that, do you think happiness, um, I'm going to get back to my main topic because this is the whole purpose of this video is what is happiness? Um, what, um, in the next few years, what do you think would make, what do you consider true happiness? And, um, do you think happiness is necessarily just to say material objects? What do you mean by material objects? Nice car, nice house. Oh, I'd like to have a nice car. I would like to have a car. Okay. But would that car make you truly happy forever? Or yes, I'll have to walk over again. <laughs> well, say, was it a true car with all expenses paid for the next 10 years? That would make me very happy. Oh, I can see why. Yeah, okay. Especially now with the way Connecticut's going. But yeah. I'm just saying, I mean, it would make me not, it would make me happy to have a car again. But is that really, what, if it would not be your, what make your lifetime happiness? My lifetime happiness is to find someone that wants to settle down and settle down with me and share their life with me. Well, Michelle's been doing that. But, I know, but I'm just like, you know what I'm trying to say? Just, right. you know... A lot of people are always searching for the happiness, but the problem is that sometimes it's just like right in their back a variation of a song there um, by the Cow Cells. They sing a song called What is Happy in 1973. And I don't have a copy of it here, but if you can find the Cow Cells, What is Happy, listen to the words carefully. And it's kind of related to what you just said. Mm -hmm. To me, happiness is being with someone else and, and you know, feeling like I'm part of something special. Right. Um, I feel the same way, Louie. Um, I feel the same way. I know. I feel the same way as Dory I, um Because I, my, another thing that I think that would make me happy is, that, is like you said, a very simple life. You know, a small cottage, um, off the grid, you know, outhouse, you know. Now that wouldn't Not make that me, would that pay would, for that, electricity. That, that wouldn't make me happy going on an, uh, and then in the winter time and after cold, you have to sit. no. Well, let's put it this way: you wouldn't have to worry about your toilet clogging. That's true. <laughs> Michelle makes some serious stinkers, trust me. Yeah, I know. He always has to hit the plunger on them too. Not always. Um. Yeah. Um. But indoor plumbing is is uh is nice to an extent, but uh, um. You know, it's just, it's not really, um, it doesn't really give me true joy to, to realize that, you know, I have to pay somebody, um, money, um, for utilities, for water or sewer or taxes, when I'd really rather be independent and off the grid. One of those things I think always made you happy it wasn't so much just that. It's like you've always been wanting to be independent ever since you were young. I don't... I, I did. It was kind of like the song by the Beatle Help. In a sense, the, I um, I really kind of rather be an independent person. I don't really like having to depend on other people to do things. Um, but, you know, it's just like the Beatle songs. You know, you realize as you get older, the, you can use assistance for some things. Um, for my case, say for example, uh, getting shopping and, you know, getting to the grocery store or maybe even reading some small print that uh, I'm running into problems with. Now, the eye drops, of course, um, um, have been working fairly well, so I'm gonna make me a little happier. Yeah, the eye drops, um, of course, now we have to deal with next month is is that you might have a problem financing the eye drops because of the PayPal credit. I know you discussed it on your channel, um, and I'm not going to go too much into that. But is the reason why you find it so frustrating because you're afraid that you're going to end up having your eyesight um, deteriorate again? Yeah, I think that's the reason that I'm concerned about it, definitely. Um, because it's like I make my eyes get better a little bit, and then all of a sudden I end up having to not keep up with the eye drops, and then my eyes deteriorate almost 
right away. So that kind of sucks. So you would be happy if you had a, not only if you had someone like building your life, but also if you could financially um, make sure that your basic needs are met. I think that's not uncommon. I think everybody wants that, that, you know, it, your basic needs met and you can find the right person and you can share that love and affection with that right person. Yes. Yeah. I think that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. And I think too, the other thing is, is that there's some mistakes, mistaken attitudes. I don't think you've seen that where there are people who would be happy. They said be happy if they had one, say a bar ball. And then they're not happy and they blow all that wad of money. And it's like, Oh, I'm not happy. And money don't make you happy. Anyway. Money is like stress happy, out. like Michelle said. Money's like a pair of ice grips. It's like a tool. But it's not gonna. If you don't know how to probably use that tool to achieve happiness, um, then it makes it harder. I mean, I know people like Michelle said that uh, you know that they went into retirement. They retire with a nice pension plan, and they were so miserable that they went at the head. They said, you know what? I'm coming out of retirement and going back to work. And it's not because any other reason other than they were happier doing something than sitting on the couch watching TV. My father was that way. Um, he was, he's a new town like me, he's smart. But when he got, when he retired from floor laying, um, he hated it because course he did have a couple infirmities as well so he went to work for Winston Auto Center and he was actually one of the guys that would take the cars down to the DMV and get them registered for the customers and um, it made him feel better than just sitting around so okay now it occurs to all the people now on social security disability I'm gonna get ready to wrap this up soon because I know Michelle's got other things to do <laughs> yes we do we got a lot to do today um, so, do you think that the current uh, welfare system and entitlement programs are really helping with people's happiness? No. What would you suggest that they change if they really wanted to make people feel better about themselves? Um, I really don't know. I can answer that. Um, well, it's not the money. Um, the biggest problem with so many of the people on entitlements, and I mentioned this on my channel, is is that there's a lot of people who have, um, who've lost their way. They get a monthly check and then they just sit there like a turd on a plate. And some of them, I hate to say it, Dory, you know what I'm talking about, start to look like turds. Yeah. And, um... And you ask them what they really wanted to have done, and and they're like, "Well, I wanted to uh, say, for example, start a hobby, um, maybe like, for example, model railroading, and but I don't get enough money to pay to buy model trains or anything because I have just a small check and it's barely pays my rent." Yeah. So, you know, those people kind of feel like, oh, well, I'm not getting ahead. I got one, oh, I got one dollar in my raise, Lumi. <laughs> you got one dollar in raise in your cola. Yep. So you can buy a soda. Yep. <laughs> so Michelle can buy three Cumberland Vimes coffees. Yep. Well, I guess it's better than nothing. Mm -hmm. But I have to admit that at a point, it, the percentage increase is ridiculous. It was mm -hmm. like point three percent increase god um so but i mean obviously um again i think that the system uh entitlements are not making happy good people or being feel like they're being pigeonholed into a box nobody likes to be pigeonholed into a box um and of course the systems overall don't care Oh, 
I guess that's about it. But you know what, guys? Let me thank you for having me on your show. No problem. And don't forget, guys, please leave comments below, and we will see you soon. And if you have suggestions for topics, don't be afraid to talk them on them. And we, meaning me, and possibly Michelle, maybe Dory, maybe even Monique. Well, eventually I'll have Monique on my program. We will have a chance to share new ideas with you. But for now, enjoy your day. Talk to you soon, okay? God Bye -bye. bless.